to another commentary done by Diggity. This is special shout out to Team Think Quick and also the New Worlds map contest. I believe there might be voting still going on, but I feel like I wanted to do these much earlier. Life has dissuaded me <laughs> from being able to do that. Upper left hand corner though, we have Kala as the Grey Protoss. He is also known as Baimaru. He is a, he's an official professional Korean player, I believe. Upper right hand corner, we have Scan, of course, who is in the ASL. I am so excited to do these replays. This is going to be some map testing on Turbine and part of one of the maps from the New Worlds competition. As you can see, it has, and this is why I have the map revealed early as well. As you, as you can see, one of the features it has is you have a free natural expansion that's not really, oftentimes you'll have the natural expansion down a ramp. This one is just straight up in your base. A lot of area to work with to build. You have these kind of interesting creep colonies at the front, and you also have minerals that are hallucinated and disappear. Looks like just about a minute into the map. But I'm not sure the aside from these creep colonies creating a little bit of a blockade, they're just kind of there, using their stuff everywhere. Otherwise, you have a third, which is kind of a mineral only, which has kind of this interesting wall feature, which means spotting can be very important, because oftentimes you have units that can range and shoot from that back corner. You have these additional bases that have double ramps at kind of the exterior locations along each side of the base. They all kind of work that way. The ramps a little bit different. So point being a lot of minerals all over the place. And then it's a three spawn map. So here's the other spawn we're looking at. And then across the middle of the map, you got kind of that turbine features. You got the turbine spinning right there. And you have these ramp features that kind of go up and down with a bit of blockade otherwise. So a little bit difficult as far as mid to late game troop movement. There's kind of a lot of funnels here and there, a lot of blockades and things like that, which might suggest, you know, might work towards for Protoss later game, but because there's a protected expansion for Terran to just take for absolute for free, and then kind of that exposed third base, I'm wondering if it favors more of the Terran early game. You can see Scan is actually just opting to go straight for 14 Command Center. We do have a 12 Nexus opposite side from Kala. I do want to also give a heads up that some of these games I have already seen and actually already did a commentary on. So I'm cheating a little bit, but I wasn't pleased with the commentary and wanted to more or less do a better job on them. So recasting here. Front door is starting to be sealed. I think this probe is going to be able to sneak in for Kala, making his way around. And actually, I think his probe got a little bit lost. I'm not sure if that's a pathing thing or if he actually selected it up into that area and ended up, that actually might cost him a little bit. You can still see going to use, yeah, that's going to ensure that he was not able to get this scout into Scan's base. Kind of curious on the timing, actually, of the probe coming across on this map, whether it'd be able to otherwise but certainly not able to now. Scan making his way to the six o'clock location. Go ahead and check things out. We do have a single gateway up, assimilator, and cybernetics core building. So regardless, Scan should be able to get an initial look in this space. He's gonna be able to see that it was a 12 Nexus probes transferring across that command center just about finished. This is gonna give Scan that early economic boost. And that's the other feature of this map because you have this protected expansion that you just can take automatically without really any issue. Kind of accelerates the early game overall. Do you see a couple, three SCV in gas, so probably going to see factory follow-up, which we'd expect generally, rather than a quick third base, although you never know in these kind of testing sort of situations. So SCV scout able to wander in. No first cell being produced. The probe is out here nearby. It looks like that Marine went ahead and pushed him back. And I just, really quick, I wanted to, also the horn of scan. Oh, I should also mention eSports Fund. eSports Fund uh, made this possible. And check out all of the rest of the commentaries that are out on either Team Think Quick's YouTube channel. I believe they also have some of that stuff up on Team Liquid, if you go to Team Liquid's page and check out the voting and check out some of the nifty maps that people made in the Foreigner community. First Dragoon being produced, the SCV going ahead and wandering out of the base to get back home. Second Assimilator being plopped down. And we have that first factory in operation. I'm almost wondering if... We'll see what Scan opts for. Going ahead and lifting the barracks up, he's gonna allow, he's actually building a bunker, huh, interesting. Building a bunker on that corner to deal with any sort of early pressure. He is only going up against a single Dragoon and one gateway production at this at this stage. Robotics is letting me produce. I do feel like it is up to the Protoss with two free bases for Terran to slow the Terran economy down. And I expect that form will mostly, either that or just be really, really risky in taking expansions. So, I guess what I'm expecting to see is either a lot of gateways early and map control, or attempted map control from there, although it's a little bit difficult because, you know, ramp and then these kind of two corners to come out of. It's not completely wide open from there. So perhaps with a little bit of just handful of Dragoons, maybe you could stop 
some vulture run buys, some things like that to try to slow the Terran economy down. We actually do see a Nexus being grabbed straight up from Kala. So he's going to go ahead and take this third base. He is, he does have that robo up, uh, but he's playing very risky here because there's the observatory. He's only got a single gateway. He's just relying on scan more or less to play passively. And he doesn't have any information at this stage. So he's playing completely in the dark. So he's just relying on scan to go for more of kind of a stable long-term game scan, grabbing that armory at about the, it's going to be finished about the 530 mark. Does have two machine shops building first tank is out for him on that front door. But I think with this bunker, it looks like this is going to play out for Scott, for Kala, because Scan's playing a little bit more passively. And on top of that, while Scan's kind of checking out this this 9 o'clock base, he hasn't wandered up with that SCV to go ahead and get the scout on the mineral only. And actually kind of playing in the dark himself, double machine shop, which suggests to me we are going to see after this initial siege tank push, either a bunch of siege tanks, actually Goliaths. I like this play because he knows that typically the Protoss has to come to him to slow his economy down. So opting to go ahead and get Goliaths to kind of have mobile units to cover all of this area. So he's like, okay, if I'm going to have to defend a lot of space, let me go ahead and get Goliaths so they're mobile and can run around and deal with any sort of, and deal with anti-air. We do have speed being upgraded, so Kala wanting to go ahead and drop into scan space, maybe go for a Reaver Harass. Two Dragoons playing light defense nearby, and the first Observer wandering in, and almost there's the scan. Gonna catch that first Observer. Wow, huge pickoff. He does see these two factories, but again, there's so much territory back here that Kala is very much in the dark, just knows that Goliaths are out there, and really doesn't know much else. And I'm wondering if that's gonna make him play a little bit more cautiously with his shuttle play and Reaver and basically allow Scan to sit back and do his thing. Scan going ahead and getting missile turrets along that bottom corner just in case there was something heading in that direction. Nine o'clock bases, the SCV's taken care of there and clean that up. I think this Reaver mostly there to provide some defense against any sort of vultures or anything else that might try to sneak in at this corner. So Kala actually not in a terrible position. He's got his three bases up. They're fully functional. He's got three gateways running. He's moving towards that mid-tier tech you want. Um, he does have shuttle speed, and I feel like, yeah, okay, shuttle speed will be there, but is it going to be as effective as he as he wants it to be here in the mid-game? Creep colony being taken down. Third base for scan in construction, so he's going to want to go ahead and wander out and try to take his mineral only and play a little bit more of a longer economic game. It looks like he's got another factory plopping down here as well. But this is kind of the thing for Protoss in this map. I feel like, yeah, okay, you got some decent Dragoon forces, but if we looked at... I don't know, a Vulture mid-game? Maybe that would have been frustrating to deal with. And part of the thing is, is he, you know, your Terran opponent here just has two free bases to just sit back and macro on top of. And there's just so many timing attacks these days that Terran can pull out. Speaking of which, Weapons 1 just about finished for Scan. He's getting a Starport as well, probably to push up to level 2 tech. He does have the... So he's got a Goliath Siege Tank Army on the ground floating this barracks. And this is kind of the critical moment, I think, as well is I'm almost wondering if the if siege tanks here kind of on this back line with some overhead spotting how would how do you deal with that as protoss we do have a shuttle wandering out here with a reaver and a single dragoon in place maybe to disrupt this mineral only scooting along this back corner there are turrets there second this turret not quite in place but because of earlier scans by scan he's playing very much in the dark might get a free reaver shot on some of these marines. So two marines being taken out, a little bit of damage on that goliath. And now that barracks kind of floating up to provide, and this is, you can just feel the exposure here. So dragoons hugging this wall can attack the SCVs over the ledge. So I love this barracks overhead to go ahead and spot that and deny it. Nine o'clock base, about halfway finished, some pylons for initial blockade, leaving this pylon wall a little bit open just for some reinforcements for Kala. Kala way ahead, actually doing a really good job macroing getting that third base up is at 130 supply to scans 94. However, with that supply lead, he needs to go ahead and push up and do something with it. He's got his Stargate up, level 1 weapons is on the way, Citadel of Dune is down. I don't see Arbiter Tech. There it is. Take it back. Arbiter Tribunal is up, another Stargate as well, so he's going to go for Arbiters, which is kind of the more stereotypical play. But again, this is kind of an odd map. So we'll see how it, it plays out. I do feel like recalls, there's just so much space to recall back here, where they could be very, very powerful in the later stages of the game. Bunch of factories being placed down. That's gonna put the factory count up to six, seven in mid game. Level 
two armor being upgraded, level two weapons, sorry, level one armor, level two weapons being upgraded. So I almost wonder if Scan's just kind of doing that. Okay, let's go for the stereotypical meta and play it that way. And we're gonna see how that executes here. However, Kala, not exactly 50 supply ahead, but about 50 supply ahead. So as far as just flat macro, he's doing quite well and in a good position, playing very defensively at this stage. And he's going ahead and taking another base as well. I like this pylon blockade to stop additional expansions from scan as well. He, he will be able to see this base coming across because of this observer once that's scooting across. And there's two reavers, perhaps, to kind of engage that. No vulture speed just yet, but we do have vultures with mines out in front. Nice scan. Man, he's just really been on top of this, taking out another observer. Just kind of predicting that reaver trying to slow these vultures down and the shuttle gets taken out. Oof, a mine dropping and killing both reavers. And the Goliath is able to take that shuttle out. That's a big win for Scan, and really, I think only lost only lost a Vulture for it, really. I'll have to go back. Maybe someone can go back and comment. I think that's all he, he lost out of all of that. However, Kala's still sitting at 170 supply comparatively. Another Observer keeping an eye on those Vultures. They are going to be able to clean... Well, if they wander in there, they'll be able to clean that up. Going to go ahead and plant some mines across this bottom corner. And this is kind of that section where we have, yeah, two large armies weird kind of ramp engagement points across the map there. Scan's going to go ahead and plant some mines to get some map control to the south so he doesn't have to worry about incursions from there. The Dragoons pressing up and making sure that they go no further. They don't have an observer alongside so they need to be very careful out here. They can micro into it. In the meantime, this is a lot of vultures being produced off those seven, off the seven factories to the south and we have two machine shops to the north just pumping tanks. So Scan going to full, full construction. He's sitting at 160 supply hitting the two minute, the 12 minute timing, I should say, for that level two weapons, level one armor. Or sorry, yeah, level two weapons, level one armor. Starting to push out, vulture speed coming up online alongside, and now it's kind of that we'll see moment. Will Kala with his 200 supply be able to fight off this timing? He does have Storm being developed, a couple High Templar out. I don't see any Arbiters just yet in the forward field. Another observer being taken out. That's like, man, it's just been an observer massacre this game. Scan's army slowly moving forward. And this is where I feel like it's just very difficult. Engaging from the south. Shuttle getting out and across. Some zealots going in the back line. A lot of zealots on the front. They are able to get on that front siege shank. There's the Arbiter out in play. But looks like between the Goliaths, between everything else, that army is going to get cleaned up. And here's the thing. Looks like a shuttle taking a bit of damage as well. Here's the thing. Scan only needs to get to this corner to disrupt this mineral only. But instead, it looks like he's gonna go ahead and swing around another Arbiter from the north. Yeah, you can see, I yeah, just come behind here, siege up, and this is a huge barrier for the Protoss to try to engage. Call it in a lot of trouble, certainly gonna end up losing this mineral only Nexus. And honestly, I don't feel like that was too terrible an engagement on his part to follow it up, but it's still just plummeting in supply. It's just, there's not a lot of room and he didn't, that's the other thing, he didn't have recall, he didn't have a lot of stasis, didn't have size storm uh, to really engage on that. The Arbiter eating some free damage, the Dragoons getting melted, and yeah, Kala realizing it's too much. That army was just piling down on him. So GGing from there, especially with the reinforcements coming of just all of those vultures speeding across the map. Game one goes to scan, and we see that, yeah, the level two, level one, 12 minute-ish timing attack from Terran works well on this map. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.